Today's title is Passion to Live with Jimmy Carruthers. And you know, Jimmy has quite a background. He was sexually abused, emotionally abu abused, physically abused, not just by a dad or a stepdad, but by pretty much the entire family and more. How do you overcome with that? And when you ask for help and you say, help me at school, and they walk straight to your dad, think they do a good job, and they leave and you are left behind. How do you deal with that? How do you overcome a troubled youth all your life? Jimmy, this was you. This was me, yes. So what was your life like growing up? Oh, it was uh, very challenging, um, very, um, very abusive. I grew up in a very abusive household, um, alcoholic parents, um, uh. Uh, drug addict uh, siblings. I was the youngest of four. And um, it, was, it was hard to escape. Because wow. every day was like war. Now, did you and your family go to church or not at all? Well, you know, that's the interesting part because we did go to church. Why? We're, we're Why would you go to church living a life like that? You know? Well, you know, a lot of people do that and they hide ah. what's really going on. Okay. I remember going to church and driving in the car and where parents are yelling and screaming the whole time at church and you get to the door and they're like, hey, brother so-and-so, hi, sister so-and-so. And nice I'm to see you with right, a big smile. And I'm Whoa. looking at them going, you just hit me. Wow. <laughs> and so it was kind of hard to understand. And I was really angry in regards to church because it wasn't safe for me. Oh, because the, the, did the church become part of not being safe because of the people falling for what they were seeing? Exactly. There was no one I could go to. I but they didn't to. know. They didn't know what was going on. I wanted, there were so many times I wanted to go and say something. You know, but I'm a little kid. And yeah. I'm, like I said, I'm the youngest of four, and I was a people pleaser all my life, so. You know, I saw that movie not too long ago, The Shack. And yes. It's a pretty intense Great movie. movie. Oh, incredibly powerful. Yes. Some people say they struggle with it, but there is depth in that. And I remember in the beginning of the movie, this young boy having this father that kept beating his mom. Yes. And he first went to church. He fessed up. And yes. then they all looked back, but he got the beating afterward. Yes. Is that what resonates with you? That resonates so much with me. I remember um, in eighth grade, eighth grade, I uh, told my counselor, I was always, I was getting in trouble in school, but I was doing it purposely. All my teachers really loved me. They thought I was this great kid, but I would purposely get in trouble at school because it was an hour of having to stay afterwards. Wow. So it was an hour of freedom for me. And they couldn't understand why I was going to like, why is he getting in trouble? What's going on? What's happening? And one time my counselor sat, and it was always at the end of school. I wouldn't do it before, because you know, I had the whole day to go. So I would do it <laughs> towards the end, towards my last class, where wow. I knew I'd have to stay. So it was, it was pretty organized for me. <laughs> and wow. so I would go and sit in my counselor's office for an hour, then I would walk home. So after a while, my counselor said, what's going on, Jimmy? You're this great kid. You're doing really good in school. What's happening? And I just let her know everything yeah. that was going on. Wow. Everything that was going on in the house, everything that was going on with my parents, as far as me having to defend my mom from my dad. And now, I and hope and your, your, this counselor did not go straight to your parents, but actually got some more serious help. No, she went straight to my parents. She drove not me home one day. Not, oh, and, and don't have you. Oh, no. Yeah, she drove me home and walked up to the door. I thought she was just going to let me out. And she walked me to the door. And she didn't tell me she was going to talk to my parents. Right. But my parents saw her and they're like, what's going on? And she says, you know, can I talk to you guys? And I had no idea what she was going to talk, talk about. So we went in the house and I sat in between my mom and my dad. And oh. the counselor sat across from us. Oh, and she's I can just visualize <laughs> this and I'm like, not a good idea. I have some some dear uh, children that I know that have been in that exact same spot. And instead of them taking matters, they've actually been told by CPS in the yeah. state that they need five hard cases to take something serious. Yes. And they only have four. And I'm like, what's it going to take to this kid before somebody's going to believe him? Yes. So yes. this happened to you? This happened to me. And once my counselor left, all hell broke loose. Oh, yeah. Oh, all yeah. And you will loose. never talk again. Uh, yeah. At, their, at that point, I, was just, I would just stay quiet. I wouldn't let anybody know what was going on. 
And the council yeah. probably drove away thinking she had done a good she deed. She thought she no was Wonder idea. Woman. <laughs> she thought she came in to save me, and that was never going to happen again. So did she back you up afterwards? Did she stay in contact? Did she say, hey, are things better now? Or did you get so beat up that you were like going to lie how w what it really was like? We never talked about it again. She never followed up with me or asked me what it was about or how I was doing. And it was just, no way. it was just no quiet. No way. Yeah. You know, but Whoa. back then, Barb, counselors didn't know a lot of things as well. And not that that excused it, but they right. didn't know a lot of things in the way counselors know. You know, I'm not going to take that excuse because you can say one and one is two. Yes. And if I say one abuse, two ca counselor, you're not just taking it to the parents because it's, it's going to just add up to predictable. Yes. So I, I'm, no, I, that's called naiveness and foolishness. So, but you lived in this, you were in this situation. You went, you knew God probably as the bad guy that wasn't fixing it. Yes, yes. Because he was never there for you in your mind. But you know, the interesting thing was for some reason, I always found a way to pray. And I don't know what I was praying about, but I would just sit in my room as this young kid and would just cry out to God wow. and say, God, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. How long were you in this unhealthy environment? Uh, up to about 16. 16 up years of 16, abuse. Yeah. And, and that was not just, it's physically, sexually, the whole nine yards. So it's almost like, did you have like PTSD from all that? How do you work through that? You know, um, I didn't have PTSD, but I, uh, it was interesting. I sat down one day and I was praying and asking God, what's going on? Why, why am I going through this? Uh, I want to find out more about that. Are you getting this? Why is it that there's fa certain things that you are dealing with that you're going through and you're like, why do I have to put up with this? What is it that we can do about it? I know it's you and I know we all deal with that to a certain extent. If that's you, call us 855-515-5550 or go to barbtv.org. Know this, God will give you the answer. All you have to do is ask. Stay tuned. At Barb TV, we deal with all kinds of different situations and many people are calling in for needs. People that are struggling with demonic issues, people that are struggling with relationships or with health issues and many different things. It is an honor to serve you. It's an honor to help you and it's an honor to show you models and stories of how things can go right. Our goal is to show you the problem, to show you the process, and then to show you the solution that God has, not just for the people that come on the air, but also for the people that God wants to help you with and bless with. God wants to be there for you, God wants to show you, and God wants to guide you. It does cost money to do those things, and it would be an honor if you would consider to help us and partner with us to make a difference, not just in the United States, but all over the world. We have a plan, we are part of God's plan, and God wants to make a difference. Donate today and be blessed. According to AmericanSPCC.org, child abuse reports involved seven and a half million children. That is a lot of kids. Over 140,000 children received foster care services. Almost 75% of victims are neglected. 18% of victims are physically abused. 8.5% of victims are sexually abused. I actually think that might be higher. 7% of victims are psychologically maltreated. Who abused and neglected the children? Over 83% of perpetrators were between the ages of 18 and 44 years. 54%, more than one half of perpetrators were women and 45% of perpetrators were men. Now, Jimmy, those statistics must not be a surprise to you at not all. Not at all. So you cried out to God with all the abuse and all the wrong treatment by siblings, by parents, by uncles. What did God answer? You know, that's a good question. Um, I remember, well, let me go back a little bit. I was eight years old and I used to read my Bible to my stuffed animals. And I would preach to my stuffed animals. And so I knew that that spirit was there. Yeah. I just didn't know what it was about. 
So when I got to about 16 years old, I remember just sitting on my bed crying and being really angry with my family. And um, God led me to read the book of Joseph. And I first time I read that story and I understood it everything. And I read oh, the Bible every front, part to you. front and back, but it was so much me. And here's what I heard God say to me. This is your life. And your family. Enslaved to your family? Your family sold is, out by them? You know, your family is going to need you before you will ever need them. That's a tough one. Yes. But you'll be able to work through it, but still that's a tough one. Yes. Because you still have the pain, the agony, the betrayal, the abandonment, the rejection. Yes. You all have that. And, but how can you just push that away? I, you know, I'm not sure exactly how I did it other than prayer and other than uh, surrounding myself with uh, people like my martial art instructor. And ah. he was the first person in my life that told me he believed in me. And that must have been gold to you. Oh, my gosh. It was amazing. Okay. Well, first, I didn't want to believe him. I was looking at this guy going, you don't even know me. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what I'm struggling through. So I wanted to find something wrong with him. And he was a strong man of God. And he kept telling me that he believed in me. And I would watch him. I watched him for three weeks, Barb, trying to find something wrong with him because I didn't want to believe it. Oh, if God's in it, that's not going <laughs> to work. And the harder you look, the more you start to believe. Yes. God, those were words from God. Those were words from power. I needed to hear those words. So that probably built your esteem and confidence to start standing up for who you are and to protect yourself? Those four simple words changed my life. How old were you at the time? I was, fit, I was 16. You were 16. I was 16. So what happened at that crucial point in your life that you were able to say no more? Just, like I said, been around him, been around my instructor and surrounding myself. I had a cousin who was also... A, um, a minister and a good friend and was always there for me. And so we would, he would come over and we would pray together and uh, he would just really share with me and help me understand what the Word of God was all about. Wow, yeah. wow. So you softened up. Now what you shared a little earlier is that you were going to be the Joseph in the family. Yes. You were going to be t probably teaching them about God. Yes. But, but there's this section, I, 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 I looked it up in the Bible right here. And because you said something about Joseph and I read it again, I was like, wow, your story and his story line up, Very much you know, so. and yet Joseph had a huge calling on his life, but Satan tried to destroy each and every bit of it. Yes. And so would you. But here, Joseph is being revealed. He is now in Egypt. Everything has turned around after a year and year of imprisonment and misery and abuse and false accusations. Sounds familiar? Yes. <laughs> All of that. You're reading and my life. <laughs> Joseph is standing right there in front of his brother and he's going to tell them who he is. Yes. And it, it says Joseph could stand it no longer. This is in Genesis 45. There were many people in the room, and he said to his attendants, Out, all of you. So he was alone with his brothers when he told them who he was. Then he broke down and wept. He wept so loudly the Egyptians could hear him. And word of it quick, quickly carried to Pharaoh's place. I am Joseph, he said to his brothers. Is my father still alive? But his brothers were Speechless. They were stunned to realize that Joseph was standing there in front of them. And they were afraid. Yeah, and I, I just have bumps. Oh, <laughs> oh, they were. How was that with you? What happened? You know, God really touched my life, and the word forgiveness was huge. And so I went to each one of my siblings and my parents, and I told them that I forgave them. I sat down in front of him and I said, you made my life hell when I was here. And I wasn't looking for anything. I wasn't looking for an apology, but I wanted them to know that I forgave him. And that, that must have floored them or they mocked. There's two ways they can go <laughs> in that moment. Which way did they choose? Lots of tears. Wow. Lots of tears. And some acknowledgement. Did you pray for them before you went into that situation? Oh, yeah. I was going into a battleground, and I didn't want to do it, but I felt God placed that in my heart. Like, this is in order for you to move on to where I want to take you. This is what you need to do. And I'm like, no, God. 
Oh. No, you don't. You don't understand. I, I mean. better be jealous <laughs> now, going the other direction. Right, you're exactly. Right? <laughs> so you went in, and that very first person you talked to, who was it? It was my sister. And, and she, she sexually she abused you. She was my sister. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How did she respond? She cried. Um, she held me. She hugged me, and that was really hard. Yeah, because you almost don't want to Right, that was really hard. That, I was yes. like, don't touch <laughs> that me. That was really hard, but um, I was able to, to hug her. Um, wow. and, uh, and then I went to my brothers and did the same thing. One of my brothers kind of blew it off a little bit, but that was okay. I wasn't looking for anything. And then I went to my parents. That would be almost the hardest ones because they allowed it, right? Yeah. Well, they were also part of the physical abuse. Oh, it's wow. You've abused all your life and you choose to forgive. If you are that person that needs to forgive right now, we want to give you a free download. Go to parptv.org and we want to give you a download to help you to start that process. Stay tuned, you want to know what happened with the parents. Peace is beautiful. However, finding peace is not always easy, but the result when you get there is life changing. Are you ready to dream bigger, pray bigger, believe bigger, and live bigger? If you want to break free from dull Christianity and transform to a vibrant, active believer, what are you waiting for? Dare to Believe Big teaches you to believe like never before. It is time to grow, evolve, and expand. Discover four words that can transform your life. Are you ready to build a relationship with God? God has incredible plans for you. It is an exciting opportunity and you can live each day with a high expectation of what God will do next. Don't wait any longer and sign up for your new free membership. Sign up now and get a free gift at daretobelievebig.com. How do you respond and go back to your parents and say, I forgive you, and you have no idea what their reaction is going to be, but you have baited it in prayer and you know you have to pray and obey. This is what happened with Joseph in Genesis 45. I am Joseph, he's Joseph, he said to his brothers, is my father still alive? But his brothers were speechless. They were stunned to realize that Joseph was standing there in front of them. Please come closer, he said to them. So they came closer and he said again, I am Joseph, your brother, the one that you sold to slavery in Egypt. But don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place. Can you even imagine? It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. Yeah. This is what God told you, Jimmy, that you were going to preserve their lives. So when you walked in with that word of prophecy way before that time, how did your parents react? They didn't know what to do. They really didn't. Uh, they apologized. Wow. They apologized. Their hearts were yeah. ready. Because I, I wouldn't go to the house for holidays. I can I, blame I, I, you, I, you I, know? I couldn't. I would uh, go through what they called holiday depression, where I would want to call and want to go over, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. And uh, my mom finally took my mom out to lunch, and she said, how come you don't come over? You don't call anymore. And I said, you know what? I'm going to come over and talk to you and Dad. That took me another month. <laughs> that's pretty fast to me. I would have said five <laughs> years. That took me another month but wow. of uh, prayer and But the, it's the Lord had that seed planted yeah. in your heart already, yeah. you know? Because I wanted to avoid it. Like oh, the well, yeah. I wanted you don't to know just... The yeah. I'm like... <sighs> They're yeah. almost not worthy for the forgiveness. Right, right. Uh, Corrie ten Boom said it so beautifully when she was in that concentration camp and came out of it, and then she was preaching forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And then right afterward, she, she met the man who had abused her, bro her sister so badly yeah. that she ended up dying. And he said, can you forgive me? And she did not know how to get that hand up. Is that how you felt? It was exactly how I felt. I sat down across from my parents the way I'm sitting down across from you. And I said, I need to talk to you guys. I need to tell you why I wasn't coming over. And I said, Mom, I protected you and you weren't there for me. You were emotionally gone. You know, and Dad, you were an alcoholic for a long time. And, you know, you abused Mom and you abused me. And, um, and it was really hard because I wasn't trying to blame them for anything. I was just like, this is why I'm forgiving you. Wow. And I told him, I said, I'm not looking for an apology. I don't need anything. 
I said, I'm completely at peace right now. Wow. But I want to let you know, because people don't understand that forgiveness doesn't mean allowing. It just means that you're no longer responsible for it. I'm not going to hold you responsible for this anymore. And I'm going to be free from this. That's huge. Yeah. That is absolutely huge. Can you say that one more time? You said that brilliantly, <laughs> you know? So forgiveness. Forgiveness doesn't mean allowing. Some people forget, don't want to forgive because they think, well, I'm allowing this person to continue to do what, I'm, what they're doing. Yeah. And it's not that. It just means you're no longer responsible for this hurt or this pain anymore. So and you I'm be free. set them free like Jesus set the people free in a, yes. in a different way yes. by saying the slate between the family is clean? Exactly. What did that do after that? For me, for me, it, uh, it put me on a different level with them. And now I'm the go-to person, just like in Joseph, I'm the go-to person when something goes wrong when my, both my mom and dad had a quadruple bypass surgery and I live in the Bay Area. My siblings live here. And I was the one to get the phone call. Wow. You know, when my biological dad passed away, I was the one that got, got the, the call. phone call. Right, so, so I'm the one that takes care of everything. So by you taking the stance, they now run exactly. to you, the whole family, because you have God in your life, because they know without God, this would have been impossible? Exactly. Wow. Exactly. So what are you, I, I, I cannot, I am not able, I refuse to believe that th this is the end of the story. No. There must be more, because God is going to use an obedience like that and giving you the courage and the boldness to forgive and to step in the promised land. Yes. So what is the promised land that God has given you? For me, it's being able to go out and share with kids that's gone through some of the same things I've gone through. Is that up to the age of 16? That's, yeah. Wow. Yeah, actually college age as well too. Wow. So I go all over and I talk to kids from kindergarten to college. What is it that you share with them? Uh, about social and emotional intelligence and how to love themselves and what we see in other people, how we treat other people is what we see in ourselves. And they have a hard time accepting that in the beginning. But then they look at me and go, oh. So, so how you treat other people is how you see yourself. Exactly. So if we have perpetrators and all these other things, they treat other people as they see themselves. Correct. It's not an excuse. It's not an excuse, no, not at all. But you get a different light yes. on who is doing this to you, where they're at. Yes. But what's the solution then? How do you go from there, you know? The solution is constant prayer, constant surrounding yourself with people that love you, constantly um, living in a life of forgiveness and learn how to forgive yourself. Because for a long time, I blamed myself of all this abuse. and it That was a life from hell. Yeah. That is a life exactly. from hell. And then you have the guilt trips with yes. it and the shame. And, and, and then the predictions of the world are you will never be the same. You will never be a normal human being. You have Correct. to live with your life. But I think that's a life from hell, too. Because doesn't is. it say in the Bible... Uh, Satan steals, kills, Jesus and destroys, destroys, but Jesus wants you to give that abundant life. So what was the healing after the forgiveness for you? The healing for me, um, I would say, was being able to share my experience with other people. I became a counselor wow. for a while, and that's really how I kind of started my healing process. I worked with kids with um, chemical dependencies and so social and emotional challenges, and just being able to talk with them and work with them helped me a lot. Wow. Yeah, because wow. as I was helping them heal, but I was beginning to heal. It talked like that in Joseph, going back to Joseph. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, I've heard this before. Because it says right here, he's protecting the family from the famine mm -hmm. and all that stuff. But then at the end, you know, it even tells here, um, don't, b don't be upset, and then this famine that has ravaged for years, but then it, at the end it says, I don't see the spot right now, is that his brothers came closer to him and started talking with him. So yes. God has expanded that for you, not just within your family, but over the entire United States of America? Yes, that was a, that was a calling that my grandmother had spoke over me, and my mom actually had spoke over me when I was younger. Even when you were already in that situation? Even when I was in that situation. Now, God often does things in threes. How often did you hear that speak over your life? Three times. It was confirmed more from my cousin. But my grandmother was the first one before she had passed away. She had said she had been praying 
and she walked out, tried to walk out of the door and couldn't get out for some reason. She went back to pray, and then she came back out and she said, God told me that he's gonna use you in a mighty way. Wow. That God has a plan for you and he's gonna use you in a mighty way. Well, my mom didn't know that my grandmother told me that. And she said the same thing. And she thing. said the same when exact God thing. When God says it three times, it gets serious. Yes. Someone wants to get a hold of you. Do you have a website? I do. What's, what is Jimmy it? JimmyCarruthers.com. Wow. One quick word for the viewer. If you could say it in less than one sentence, what would you tell to the viewer that, was in a situ that is in a situation like you were today? I would say, remember two things. One, hurt people hurt people. Wow. People that are hurting hurt other people. Mm. And we don't realize how hurt people are. The other thing is, learn to walk in forgiveness. Because it's not for the person that's doing that to you, it's for you. Wow. It's for you to be free. So how do you forgive? You said pray. Pray. And what I want to add to that, thank you for being on the show, Jimmy. What I want to add to that, if you're not able to forgive, because I had that situation once in my life, you just, I said, God, I don't know how to forgive, but in obedience to you, I forgive this person. And the feeling came later. Once I allowed and gave it over to God, God took care of it, and it grew into that it was completely forgiven. I'm not asking you to forget. Right. But I am asking you, as God's word is teaching us, you have to forgive, because if you don't, you're the one that will stay in that prison of he owes or she owes me the rest of your life. And it's not worth living that way. No. We want to pray for you. BarbTV.org. Look us up at the website or go to uh, or 855-515-5550. God loves you. When you have been conceived by rape, when you've been abused all your life, as well by your father, as by family, as by your stepdad, and it's just a nightmare that follows you. And it was wrong. I didn't realize that it was part of healing. I didn't know what it was, but I, I felt like I needed to know. It did, and it would make me cry. Like, he, like it, my mother-in-law would get frustrated. She's like, he never even makes food for himself, and he's always making you food. And <laughs> if this is such a good God, why did he allow this to happen to me? Mm -hmm. Did you ever come up with that question? Closing my eyes and me um, singing is when the Lord told me, you are right where you need to be. This is where you're at your highest self. Wow. And with that...